Welcome back. In this part of our mini series, I'm going to show you how you can use this special wrapping software called R3DS Wrap, also known as Wrap or the Russian 3D Scanner. And this is kind of the magic utility that will allow us to take the Genesis figure and wrap it around a body scan and then export a modified version of the Genesis base figure so that we can import it back into DAS Studio to create a morph. Let me show you where you can get it from. So it's a website called Russian 3D Scanner. Com. And they have a lot of information. They have very good documentation on how you use this project. It's available for Linux as well as Windows. And you can get a 30-day trial version here. These are some of the examples that people have made with this software. It's very, very cool. Up here under Buy, this is where you can get it. Or you can download it for free and test it out. If you're an indie developer, you can get an indie license here for uh, list price $370. Or there's also a ZBrush version of the software available that is a plugin for ZBrush, but you need ZBrush to use it and it doesn't have all the features of the standalone version. So this is what I'm using here, the standalone version of R3DS Wrap. Let's take a look at it. It's a node-based software, so it looks a little bit scary maybe at first, but it's soon going to grow on you. I'm, I'm, trust me when I say you will be able to pick it up very easily. This is our 3D viewport. It's got some other viewports up here that we're going to be using. And the main meat and potatoes of this app is happening here on the top right. This is our node window. This is a little bit like the node graph from Blender. And I'm going to go and right click to create these nodes. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in both my geometries here. And that happens under load save with load geometry. I'll do this twice so that I can load two geometries. I'm going to build myself a little tree here. The left hand side is going to be my floating geometry. I'll hit F2 to rename that. I'm going to call it Genesis just so that we remember what is what. On the right hand side here, that's going to be my static geometry. I'm going to call that the scan. Hit F2 just to relabel these nodes just so that we know, you know what's what here. I'm going to go and load my Genesis figure here. Just click on it and then the bottom window here we can go and hunt for the file that's the one that we've picked up on the that we've stashed on the desktop under 3dsk under obj's this is my genesis 8 base female load her in and there she is she's a little bit large so we can only see her feet but if we press f then we can frame her up as she should be navigating the viewport is there's some shortcuts here in the bottom left hand corner Hold down Alt, then left click in the viewport to navigate around. Alt and middle mouse button will pan, and then the mouse wheel will scroll in and out. I'm going to do the same with the scan. So I'm going to click the node and hunt for that file. And that's going to be Cassandra's scan. Once again, due to the large number of polygons, it's going to take a little bit of time to load her in. Just a few seconds. So there she is. And if I go and look at her, she appears to be totally black, but that's because the wireframe appears to be occluding the color of the body. So this is how dense the mesh is. I can switch that off to get a better view of the figure. So under wireframe, I'll take that off. And under color, I might just go give it a different, different color, just so that I know which geometry is what, because we'll be seeing these overlaid quite a lot. If I want to disable one of these figures in the viewport, all I need to do is hit that little light bulb icon on any of these nodes that'll switch it off. So one thing that we'll notice if we just have a look at the Genesis figure here is that the wrapping software is going to have a little problem because I've exported the figure with all the bits intact and that includes eyeballs as well as the mouth bag. And that is not something that this software likes. So we're going to give it a subset of that geometry, which is just the outer shell without the eyes, the teeth, or the mouth bag. To do that, I'm going to have to create a subset of all these polygons, namely, first of all, with a selection node. So this one here, select polygons, right click under selection. And if I plug my Genesis figure into here, I can then go and select the polygons that I'd like for this subset to include. The subset is the next thing that's under geometry subset. And that is that basically takes in my original geometry. And then we'll go and put the select polygons right into here. On this select polygons node here, I'll head over to the visual editor and I see a different representation of my Genesis figure now with either polygroups or materials. 
These are all the materials of the Genesis 8 figure. So I need to go and select everything except for eyes and mouth bags. And that happens up here. I can do this by material group, and that'll be the torso. This is now going to be part of the subset later. I'm also going to use the face and the lips, as well as the ears. On Genesis 8.1, these groups will be slightly different. There's also the legs down here, and we have the arms, of course. And this is almost everything. So notice no eyelashes. We don't want the eyelashes. Uh, we have fingernails and toenails still. They need to be part of that group as well. But that's no, no problem. This is toenails. And then we have the fingernails here. All righty. So that is now a sub-selection of my original Genesis figure. And if I go back into my viewport, I now see two figures overlaid with one another. And that's because both of these light bulbs are on. Let me go switch off the top one and I'll see that my Genesis figure now ha appears to have no eyes. That's exactly how I like it. All right, a little bit of prep work done. Now let's bring back our scan here and see if we can ask the software to wrap one around the other. That happens with another node, namely the wrapping node. You can find that under alignment, but you can also just, if you know the name of a node, you can just go and search for it. So I could just type in wrapping here and then I'll see the wrapping node as well as fast wrapping and blend wrapping. They're different algorithms, but standard wrapping is going to be just fine. So the wrapping node is a little tricky. It has four inputs here. We need three of them, namely the first geometry, which is the floating geometry, which is the subset of our Genesis figure that we've made. Then we need the fixed geometry that tells the program what to wrap the floating geometry around. And that is, of course, our scan. And then it takes another input that is a point correspondence between these two nodes. So we don't necessarily need to use it depending on how accurately matched these objects are. So if you had two objects, like two Genesis characters, maybe one from an older generation and one from a newer generation, they're already lined up in pretty much the same A pores. The program is fairly good at just working it out all by itself. But we have severe differences here. So it's not quite an A pose. The height isn't exactly lined up. And, you know, there's, there's just too many differences for the program to work this out all by itself. But we can have a look. So if you just click on the wrapping node and then click the computer, button, watch what happens. This is the program now hard at work, trying to shrink wrap the Genesis figure around a body scan. And, you know, I mean, without any references, it does a fairly good job all by itself, I have to say. This process can take a little bit of time, but, you know, around a minute at the most, depending on how dense these meshes are and how many points need to be calculated. And this is it now. Without any help, it's worked out something that's pretty cool. And notice we have several meshes overlaid once again. So I'm going to go and switch off my scan. And I'm also going to switch off my subset so that it just leaves the output of the wrapping node intact here. And this is the Genesis geometry. Very cool, but in a completely different shape now. If we look closely, we'll have a look if her fingers are all intact, which they, they, I mean, we have five fingers, but the nails are kind of, you know, bulging out here. That's not, that's not great. Uh, the other hand, we also have fingers. That's awesome. The feet, they might be another matter. I see some wonkiness here on the, on the big toe going on here, but hey, it's been trying and it had no help from us whatsoever. Let's go help it out by something called select point pairs. So once again, right click, that is under selection. And it's this little guy here, select point pairs. That's a node that takes the geometry, the, the subset geometry, as well as a scan. And out comes, well, a selection of point pairs. And we can connect that to the kind of yellow icon here. It all helps you out by colors and as I said, there's a very good documentation on the website if you want to read up on any of these nodes and what they're made for, what other nodes you can get. Select the point pairs node and let's go back over to the visual editor. And now we have both our geometries in a separate viewport each. This is kind of exciting. This is really the, the exciting secret source of the whole thing. Let's go and sync our views. That's down here. That means if I move one, the other one will move with it. And on our figures, that makes sense because they're very close visually. But if you had something that has a very different scale or something that looks very different, then, you know, you want to disable that. 
I want to go and do the fingers first because I think we can do a little bit of an improvement there. So I'm going to use these points just by left clicking on the tip of the nail here. And I'm telling the program, therefore, where these points should be on the other geometry. If you make a mistake, you can go and control click any of these points to remove them. So if I put this point here now, I can go and control click to remove that. Or I can go and uh, click a point, say if I put it here by, by accident, and if I wanted to put it in a different place, I can go and left click and drag the point, and then it'll move it to wherever it needs to be instead. So I'm going to use the tips of the fingers here. And you can see that the scan here isn't exactly accurate, but that's okay. Just make sure they're in the same, you put them in the same order so that they have the same numbers. So let's go and use the, the next hand here. Once again, I go thumb and then the index finger and just make my way around here. The more points you place, the more accurate the software can work out the wrap up to a point. I'm going to do the same with the toes because we had issues there. And I recommend always using points only when you have to. So don't anticipate problems until they actually arrive, you know what I mean? So don't try to overdo the points in anticipation. See how well the program works it out. And also know that the positions that it can't work out well, there is a special trick that I'll show you in the next episode in regards to bringing features back from the original geometry on your after your wrapping so it's very very cleverly done there's always you know the, the other thing you can do of course is kind of pick this move this too far to the left i'm thinking so you can also control z will undo it if you accidentally pick the point there that you didn't want to pick so these toes are you know this is <laughs> i mean she was standing on a flat surface i guess but it's going to be all right don't worry about it this uh, we can work with this I think the ears are also something I'd like to take a look at. I'm going to try and put points on the top, on the left and on the bottom here. And then also on the other side. Know that if you have two figures that are absolutely symmetrical like my genesis character say i had an older genesis one character and a genesis eight character then i could go and switch on the symmetry on this program as well and that will allow me to just set points on one side and they'd be automatically matched on the other side let me just quickly show you where that is that's on the bottom right here if you have a look at these two tabs that's the left geometry and the right geometry and you could just go and enable the x symmetry on both geometries i can't do it because my body scan isn't symmetrical only my genesis character is so you know i wouldn't i wouldn't benefit from that okay let's have a look what the wrapping node makes of that so just select wrapping and click the big compute button and you know let's have a look what happens to see the result in action without the points, let's head over back to the 3D viewport here. And this is where we see our beautiful new Genesis geometry. Now with slightly improved fingernails. Maybe we have to go and restore that later. Toes, on the other hand, look very good. Might be a little issue on the side here, but that's okay. We're going to fix that later. How are the ears doing? There's also this bulge on the back of her head. This is where she was wearing kind of a hair net to keep the hair in place. 
and we're going to take care of that. So the ears, they look not too bad. So this is something we can restore later from the original geometry. Mouth and nose, I'm kind of happy with. I suppose we could set some points so that the nostrils are aligned better. You get the idea. The more points you set, the more intact your geometry is going to be. I think I'm going to leave it here just for the sake of brevity. And just know that the more points you set, the more accurate your wrap is going to be. Breasts look okay as well. I suppose you could add additional points on the nipples if you wanted to. I think it's all looking fairly good here. I might just go and leave it as it is. Okay, so the astute observer will have noticed that we've taken geometry away from Genesis, namely the eyes and the mouth bags. And the wrapping node would now provide us with geometry, but we can't really use that in Das Studio because if we try and import this as a morph, Das Studio is going to say, hey, that geometry doesn't match and I can't make a morph. So what we need to do is we need to restore the polygons that we've removed from Genesis before, namely the eyes and the mouth pack. To do that, we can have we can use a node called the lattice node. You can either type it in, lattice, here it is, or you'll find it under geometry. And this one's a really crazy node. It takes the original, the geometry to deform, which is our original Genesis figure with all the polygons intact. And then it asks for a source deformation. And that is essentially what we've got in the subset node here. So this is the original and this is how what we've made of it. And this is now what this geometry has turned into after wrapping. So the target deformation. And that's essentially the output of the wrapping node. And that will auto calculate itself down here the moment I connect this. And now I can go and switch the output of the wrapping node off and have a look at my Genesis character now. And you can see that she now has eyes. And they might be a little bit wonky, but we're going to fix that in a moment. So output of the wrapping node, no eyes, no mouth bag, no teeth just the outer shell we've selected. And after the lattice node, we now have all that geometry restored. And that is kind of cool. It also smooths this out if you choose to do that with the neighbors option here. This Each of these nodes has options down here. And four is the default. If you set this to 20, it'll think about it for a second and it'll restore things for you, including the eyes as well as the ears. But it comes slightly at the expense of smoothing out the character in ways that you might get away from the shape of the scan. So if I set this to 10, then you'll see that uh, the geometry is shifting back into its more original place, but it's slightly more distorted place. So four was the default. And then 20 is, you know, very smoothed out. Uh, you can use it, but I'm going to go with 10 here just to show you one other aspect of this program that is just so, so cool. If you're okay with this and if you're happy with the results so far, you can go and right click and head over to load save and just go and save the geometry, connect this output of the lattice node to the save geometry node, give it a file name and then go and export the changed geometry and use it. I'd like to go one step further though and show you how you can tidy this up in our next episode in which I'm going to talk to you about the brush node. Stay tuned for that. Mm -hmm.